Right, so I don't see any big topics, so I'll just jump into the issues page. All right, so three, three, four, one. This is an interesting one. Um, basically, there used to be uh, an issue building on S. 390 or was it maybe unit tests as well and we thought we figured it out by upgrading go as we found similar issues opened in under the go issues page but now the s390 folks are reporting that this didn't fix the issue and what they're seeing is that the pr limit tests are um, hitting a malloc error, I think, or not, sorry, I'm mixing something. It's a segmentation violation here. And what's really weird is that these two approaches are working around it. And uh, I, I don't see why why they would be working around it. Like for example, this one is increasing it from one gigabyte to two. And I, I don't see why that would help. Like asking for one gigabyte is plenty for that unit test anyway. So that should work, but it doesn't. So, uh, and that cover profile, uh, to be honest, I don't know what's that about. Maybe that's the go overalls thingy, but I'm not sure. It's a generic coverage. Um... So basically, it, it just like prints the coverage. Um, so Go calculates the coverage, and then GovRolls just makes it into a pretty UI. But you no, know, the, the the cover profile is what contains that information. Gotcha. So I I don't know why that would work around the issue, right? Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I I honestly don't understand anything. I'm I'm a little hesitant increasing the PR limit. But... Yeah, no, I I commented here saying that uh, I don't think it's a good idea. I really would like to understand the real issue with requesting one giga. It should be plenty, and it should be legit to to ask for that. So why would it fail on S three ninety? So I, I I wouldn't take a PR that goes any of these ways. Well, I, wanna... so it, I mean, I could understand that using the coverage monitor would increase memory consumption because it, you know, is tracking um, calls to every function. So I'm sure I'm sure it uses more memory. Mm hmm. That would be my bet. So that that so I guess I'm just saying that um, adding that flag could uh, change the memory consumption of the test. I see. Yeah. So maybe that uh, coverage thing is not very optimized for s390 and uh, that's what making it explode it's possible or who yeah i don't know i mean without knowing too many of the details it could you know we could even be on the edge of it now <laughs> you know um i don't know right okay could we just disable that flag on S390? It's not like we would care, you know, the coverage doesn't change on which architecture we're running it on, so. Unless we have architecture specific code. True. Or architecture specific unit tests, so, but I don't think we well, have. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, unit tests are typically, I think, independent, but 
can have different code, but I don't think I don't know that we do have any. Yeah, we, we use tons of libraries, so. So they say that upping to two gig fixes it. Yeah, upping the PR limit, and the the PR limit is um, uh, for preventing like malicious uh, images from you know using up all the CPU and memory on on the in the pod. Yeah, and causing a denial of service type deal. Yeah. Well, personally, I, I don't think that's a huge concern since we're in a pod that's already restricted. Well, so uh, can't we do a runtime thing then maybe if the test is running on that platform? Like you can, I'm sure there's some Go uh, environment variable or something you can check that will do, that will make it two gig on that platform and one for other platforms. Yeah, of course we can. It's just that I would really like to see like a breakdown of what's happening exactly. Like that theory sounds good, but still missing a few pieces. Like, um, so that container that runs the, yeah, no, I, I'm not sure, honestly. I was thinking maybe the container we used to run the unit test was limited, but it's not. Yeah, I, I mean, wanna... to me, yeah, I like if, if this is an area that interests you and you want to figure out more what's going on, but like <laughs> a, ch a cheap fix may just be to check if you're if you're running on that platform and increase it. Yeah. Okay, let me write down a summary. Right, does that look fine? Just posted that and go back to the issue page. All right, so I think this, I think we discussed it. No, we didn't discuss this one. Or did we? Uh, yeah, I, th I think we did. Okay, right. So I guess we're done with issues. Maybe I can sort by uh, updated. Right, so we have this one and I think I think we had a conclusion here at some point. 
All right, other approaches. Yes, yeah, so I guess um, this contributor was looking for another approach to take and uh, don't remember the exact details, but I know this the approach that was initially proposed is not solving the problem. So they got to a testing stage and there they noticed it's, it's no good, it's not helping. So I guess it's also not that much of a problem if they didn't suggest anything since then. Or they just give up on, um, what was it? Oh, it was like service meshes. So they're just disabling it for. Yeah, I remember this guy was pretty active for a while and I think he contributed a PR and I mean, maybe, I don't know what current state is. Mm. I know there's a Slack thread on the Kubernetes Slack. Oh, he also has that PR for Bazel. Maybe this that was, was the on the 16th, did it say? And then he reopened the issue on the 15th, maybe because so this maybe this just didn't have the fix reference. Mm, this was yeah. reopened on the 11th and the PR was merged. So can, maybe we can ask him this if it was fixed by the PR. <clears throat> Right. This is about unmeshing them. So I think that was the conclusion that they just gave up on trying to mesh all of these. And yeah, I, I just wonder, I know meshing the VM pods was important for this person. Yeah, that was an interesting episode, to be honest. You'd think that uh, there's no re reason to mesh these, but then it was uh, explaining to us how service meshes have a few other, uh, they have other functionality that he's after. And that was important to, to them in that company. Well, definitely like, you know, Importer, you know, especially if the pod is going to the network or something, you know, I could understand it for sure. Yep. Let me see if they ended up adding the. Yeah, that's good. So they added this uh, company name in the adopters list. So we could see what they do. At the edge, nice. Cool. Let's see if, uh... oh, wow. They just commented. Great. Um, let me just fix zoom quickly. Right, so I'm back to the issues page and see what we have here. So I think this is solved, or at least partly solved. 
they opted out of uh, of the unsupported provider. Or maybe they wanted like a like an annotation based mechanism that would be extensible so you don't have to keep adding adding these provisioners one by one. Yeah. I can barely hear you. You're some uh, static. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so we gave up this option of uh, adding an annotation. We thought it's not uh, the right way to go. Okay. Uh, let me just double check with this person that they're fine for now. We thought that touching the storage class itself is uh, is not relevant because uh, you know it's a uh, CDR coverage specific. Right. So next issue. So I guess um, they had an issue with one CSI driver, and they were they mentioned trying out port works later to see if that works. But what they what they were uh, what they were seeing was really weird. They should have had the the space, but they didn't. Anyway, I'll just drop this here. Um, I think this can be done today, or was this done by some PR? Maybe it was mentioned. No, no, man. Okay, here it is. Yeah. So this is about S390, right? Pretty sure it is, yeah. And I don't see anything blocking this PR. There's a review and then there's uh, some comments and the life cycle rotten was removed. Okay. 
I guess this part was never resolved and that kind of blocks it. Okay, I think I'll just leave this one out. And this has come up quite a, quite a few times in our issues page. I believe it can be fixed by simply, um, right, so adding a couple of uh, tar options that make more sense when you're not running as root. So don't extract the time and uh, metadata. Do we have one more person hitting this? Yeah, I don't think it's stale. It's a real issue that can be fixed. Okay. And I also remember this one that's about, actually, I don't remember what this is about. Let me just ping the person here. So I think we kind of went through the interesting issues. I don't think we should go further. So let me check in again if we have any topics. And uh, maybe someone has an issue or PR that we can open up. I think that'll be more fun than the remaining issues here. Right, so I guess we can end a little early and uh, thanks everyone for joining. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.